This video will list the top 6 primary wall generals as of May 2023. Unlike the top 5 videos produced for each of the troop types, I'm going to structure this one a bit differently. The first major difference is that I'm not going to differentiate between free to play and premium generals in this list. It will simply be an overall video covering the top options regardless of accessibility. I'm choosing to do it this way as a wall general is a long term decision. There are some okay wall generals that are free to play, but for something that is meant to be a permanent or semi-permanent choice, you really want to get something that will last. There are better uses for Blood of Ares than a free-to-play wall general, so you'd be better off working toward getting one of the premium wall generals, even if Ascension isn't possible for you yet. Before we break into the top 10 wall generals, some quick news. If you're using Aptoid to get payment discounts, the next bonus discount day is today, May 16th, with an additional 10% cashback on top of the extra bonus that you already get from using the Miser code. That's a whopping 35% that you can get as cash back on the higher end. If you haven't set it up already, check the pinned comment or video description for instructions. Now back to the top 10 wall general list. The considerations made for the selection of these generals are much broader than the other top 5 lists as there are many more considerations to make. However, as mentioned in previous videos, there are specific stats that I value higher on a wall general than others due to the way in which mixed troops defend on the battlefield. I also make the assumption here that you have all troop types and value a rounded defensive build. Wall generals are much harder to rank as they depend largely on your troop composition, so these number rankings aren't strict rankings. The number one pick on this list might not even be a top 5 choice for you depending on your setup so make sure to pick the one that is right for you. For range troops and siege machines, I'd prioritize attack, then HP, followed by defense. For cavalry and ground troops, I'd prioritize HP, then defense, followed by attack. Keep in mind that crafting a strong defensive setup requires a lot more than just picking the right general. You need high quality equipment refined effectively, you'll need fully outfitted subordinate city officers designed for debuffing enemy troops, you need high technology and a solid amount of composition of troops. Still, a well-selected wall general is part of the equation, so let's get this list started. Number 1, Leo III. Leo III's skill provides a 10% increase to in-city attack for all troops with an additional 35% in-city siege attack. With specialty and ascension considered, Leo III has very high defensive stats for ground and mounted, while also providing excellent siege damage. Overall, Leo is a very well-rounded general. Number 2, Zachary Taylor. Taylor's skill increases in-city range attack by 50% when placed on the wall. In contrast to Leo, Taylor provides tremendous ranged troop attack buffs, but is lower when it comes to siege. Taylor has balanced defensive buffs for ground, mounted, and ranged. Compared to George Dewey, Taylor is on the weaker end when it comes to siege, but I'd value the defensive buffs on cavalry and ground higher than percentage-based siege attack. Number 3, George Dewey. Dewey's skill increases in-city mounted HP by 15% and in-city ranged and siege attack by 20%. Dewey boasts high ranged and siege damage as well as extra HP for these troops as well. Dewey has decent defensive buffs for mounted troops, but low ground defensive stats and attack. If you have Dewey, you might balance the lower defensive stats with a strong ground assistant wall general. One benefit to Dewey is that he's very slightly more accessible to players due to his appearance in the great general chest. It's still not super accessible, but it does provide fragments for ascension that could be used down the road. Number 4, William Marshall. Marshall's skill boosts in-city ground and mounted HP by 20% and in-city ranged and siege attack by 20%. Overall, Marshall brings good ranged and siege damage to the table, along with respectable mounted and ground HP. He's not quite as well-rounded as the others, but he's still very strong. An assistant to improve defensive buffs for ground and mounted would be a great choice for William Marshall. Number 5, Leonidas I. Leonidas I's skill adds 30% to in-city ground attack and HP, as well as 25% to in-city ranged attack. With specialty and ascension, he brings excellent ground and mounted defensive buffs, but he's not quite up to par with ranged or siege. Leonidas's lackings can be balanced with an assistant wall general that boosts siege and ranged attack. Number 6, Yodo Dono. 
Yododono's skill increases in-city range attack by 40% and in-city HP to all troops by 20%. Yododono has excellent ranged attack, but mediocre siege. Her ground and mounted defensive buffs are respectable, but nothing to write home about. There are other wall generals that didn't make this list, as I wanted to keep it relatively short, so keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list. Also, just because I ordered it in a specific way does not mean that the highest picks are the best for you. Consider your own individual strengths and weaknesses when selecting a wall general. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. If you liked what you saw, please consider hitting the like button and checking out other videos on the Miser's Guide to Ebony. I'll see you in the next video.